use the method of Lagrange multipliers to minimize the function subject to the constraint. Uh, to begin with, let's take a look at the outline. We need to first recognize the objective function fxyz given in the question, as well as another function g of xyz, where the equation g equals zero describes exactly the constraint given in the question, because it is not always that the constraint is given in this form. <laughs> Next, we're gonna establish a system of a bunch of equations by equating the gradient of f and lambda times the gradient of g, together with the constraint in step one. Notice that the first equation here is indeed a vector equation in three dimensions. So it's gonna give you three equations. Together with the next equation, you're gonna have a system uh, of four equations in total. And in solving this system, you can expect you might have more than one set of solutions. Last but not least, we're gonna move on to evaluating the objective function uh, at all the solutions found in step two. And then we will compare all the outputs to find out our maximum value and the minimum value. Okay, let's take a look at how we actually solve it. Uh, the objective function is all obviously already given in the question. And to have our constraint, we need to write this in this form. So we need to move everything to one side to have x plus y plus z equal uh, minus one equal to zero. Okay, so our g function is gonna be x plus y plus z minus one. Okay, and then we calculate the gradient of f. Gradient of f is partial partial x, partial partial y, partial partial z, which is 2x, 2y, 2z in this case. And then gradient of g is going to be 1, 1, and 1 by taking the partial derivative. Next, we're going to set gradient of f equals lambda gradient of g. So we will have uh, 2x, 2y, 2z equal to lambda times 1, 1, 1. Together with the constraint that we have, which is x plus y plus z minus 1 equal to 0. As I said, the first equation here is going gonna, is gonna to give you three equations. Okay, We see that by distributing this lambda into this uh, vector. So this can be written as lambda, lambda, lambda. And then we will have three equations by equating the corresponding components. For example, 2x equal to lambda, right? Second component, 2y equal to lambda, and then 2z equal to lambda. So we're gonna have a system like this. 2x equal to lambda, 2y equal to lambda, 2z equal to lambda, and last, this one, minus one equal to zero. At this point, you might be very curious and wonder what the general steps are in solving such a system. And in fact, there's no such a thing as a general method to solve such a system because the way uh, of solving it might be uh, entirely random and very technical, depending on how complicated the functions were given in the question. And then this one happens to be very simple. You can just solve for x, y, z in each of these equations and plot them all into the last equation. So you're gonna have x equal to one third, y one third, z one third. Of course, we can also solve for lambda, which is two third. But we're not very interested in lambda because we only look for the point x, y, z. Okay, so we have already finished solving this question, uh, solving this uh, equation. Now let's move on to uh, evaluating the function. So evaluate the function at one third, one third, and one third. It's gonna give us this. Which is one third, okay? And step three says, we are supposed to evaluate all the solutions uh, to find out uh, which one is the max, which one is the min by comparing the outputs. 
but since we have only one set of solution here, so we don't really know uh, whether this set of solution gives us the uh, maximum output or minimum output. So we're gonna uh, have to choose another point, which is called a reference point, um, that satisfies the constraint, and then we evaluate the function at that point to see what output it's gonna give us, okay? Just notice uh, this reference point is not any random point that you can choose. It must satisfy the constraint. But we can see there are many points that can satisfy this constraint. For example, I can take the reference point to be 1, 0, 0, right? Or 0, 1, 0, or like uh, other things. Okay, for convenience, I'm going to take maybe 0, 1, 0 as a reference point. And then evaluate the function at this reference point, 0, 1, 0, right? And then you're going to have output to be 1. Okay, so we compare this output to this output. Obviously, this output is greater than this output, which tells us that this one cannot be a maximum, okay? So it has to be a minimum. So our conclusion right now is that uh, we have a minimum this point, one third, one third, and one third. That is how we uh, use the method of Lagrange modifiers to find the minimum value of this function subject to the constraint.